Hello and welcome back to the third part of this tutorial series on creating the Earth in the EV engine. My name is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and today we're going to be going over how to create the atmosphere in the EV engine. As a sort of preface to all of this, if you are not familiar with nodes or have not watched the previous two parts, I would recommend watching those beforehand. So, atmospheres. Well, it's quite a complicated subject and I'm going to be showing you my way of doing it. Now, our first instinct would be maybe to duplicate the UV sphere and then work off that, but that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to add an icosphere. And the reason for this is because that the UV sphere's poles actually generate a lot of artifacting within the shader that I'm going to be setting up and showing you. In the add object pop-up menu, we want to add increase our subdivision of our icosphere to around five. You want to be careful as to not put a too high number as I know from experience that a 12 will crash you. We're then going to make our object uh, smooth shaded by pressing W to open our special menu and then selecting shade smooth. With our icosphere selected, we're going to create a new material and we're going to call this atmosphere. We are not going to need the default principled BSDF shader, so we can get rid of that. Okay, we're about to start creating the node setup. I highly suggest that you pause throughout this video because there will be a lot of nodes. The first node that we're going to get is a Fresnel node. Now the Fresnel node is going to make up the backbone of this shader. Now I'll show you why. If I plug this into the surface input of our output node, you will see that what it is essentially doing, it is creating this very, very nice gradient in towards the center of our object, no matter how we orient our view. So quite a useful node. But the problem is it's got a very harsh edge. And well, that's the first step that we're going to take. We're going to make sure that that edge is nice and soft and faded. So with our Fresnel that we already have, Select it. Let's change our IOR to about 0.98. Next, we're going to want to duplicate our already made Fresnel, so Shift D, and we're just going to plonk it, you know, just a bit out here. And then we're going to change the IOR value to 28.32. We are then going to create an invert node and run it through the first Fresnel that we created. So we want to make sure that the factor of that Fresnel is going into the color input of our invert. And next we're going to create a math node. And we're going to plonk the top Fresnel into the top value and the bottom Fresnel into the bottom value. And we're going to change the math function to a modulo function. The next port of order is to create a color ramp. So we're going to create a color ramp and we're going to put the output of a modulo function into the input of our color ramp. And then we're going to switch the black and the white. So we're going to reverse them. We can do it manually or we can press the drop down menu above. But we're then going to change the value of the position of the black value to about 0.214. Now, by this point here, you may have noticed that we've got that faded value starting to kind of pop in. But what we really need to do now is get rid of the excess on the edge. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to duplicate our Fresnel again so and drag that just beneath the color ramp and we're going to change the value of the IOR to about 0 0.94. We then want to create another math node so we can just duplicate our modulo function and we're going to set that to a subtract function and put our Fresnel into the bottom value of our subtract function. We're just going to give it a little bit to you know, load the shader. And here we go. You'll notice that we have that really nice faded edge now, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now make sure that you save your work often because Blender 2.8 is prone to crashing. And with this shader set up, it is even more so prone to crashing at its present build. Our next step is to duplicate another math node and we're going to change the function to a multiply function. 
Our next step is to create a new node called a layer weight node. And it almost acts like a Fresnel. We're then going to create a color ramp node. And then we're going to plug the Fresnel output into the factor input of the color ramp and change the value of the layer weight to 0 0.225. We're then going to change the interpolation of our color ramp from linear to cardinal. And then we're going to change the black bars position to about 0 0.014. And then we're going to select our white bar and we're going to drag the value of that down just so that it's a bit gray. We are then going to plug in the color output of our color ramp into the multiplies value. And this is going to give us a really nice looking, well, the beginnings of an atmosphere, I would say. So if you haven't already, you could please save it because we don't want us to lose any of our work now, do we? Okay, now let's work on creating our transparency of our atmosphere. So let's add a mix shader, plug that into there. And then we're gonna add a transparent BSDF and we're going to then just you know, plug it into a shader socket. So you can plug it into the top value. And then we're going to take our multiply value and take it out of the shader socket and put it into the factor because that's what's going to be driving our transparency. If you want, you can turn the blend mode to something other than opaque. I'm just going to leave it off for the times being just so mine does not crash. And then I'm going to drag out my nodes just so I'm given a bit more space to work with. And we're now going to add a bit of a dash of color. So what I'm going to do is going to add a mix RGB node. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm then going to just plonk that there. You could also add just a pure RGB node. I'm, I don't know, I'm lazy like this. <laughs> and then I'm just going to drag that and push it up into the blues and make sure that the fact is at zero. And then I'm going to add an emission shader and plug the mix color into the color input of our emission. And then I'm going to get a mix shader again, plug the emission into the top value of that shader. I'm then going to make sure that the factor of that mix shader is at zero. In this next part, I make a mistake and I put in a normal node. You do not have to do that. I'm gonna add another mix shader. Then I'm gonna plug the final mix shader into the mix shader just before the material output. So rather convoluted, please, if you missed any of that, you can go and rewind. And then going to set our blend mode to from opaque to alpha blend, and you'll be able to see that there is a very, very, very faint atmosphere around our earth now, which is exactly what we want. But we're going to change and play with the values a bit later, but this is what we should have by now. To make it less dull, we're just going to pump up the emission strength to something like a six. And as you can see, that really helps up our atmosphere, just kind of gives it that punchiness that it needs. We can scale it down as well. An atmosphere shouldn't extend too far out, just to kind of make it look our believable. Our next step is that we're going to make the darker side of our atmosphere a bit more subdued. To do this, we're going to take the color of our atmosphere and we're going to make a darker variant of it. So instead of just, well, creating a darker variant of it, we're going to use the actual color to drive this darkness. So we're going to add in a brightness and contrast node and set the brightness to 0 0.03. Then we're going to add in a mix RGB node. And we're going to set that to darken. And we're going to add the color of our bright contrast into the color one and leave the factor at 0 0.5. We're then going to change the value of color two and just drag it down so that it's very dark gray and maybe push it up into the blues a bit. We're then going to duplicate the emission node so that we can use the output of our mix RGB and to put it into the second emission. 
And then we're going to place that emission output into the second last mix shader. Now this is where I realized that I had made a mistake and I had to get rid of the normal node. After getting rid of it, ensure that your second last mix shaders factor is set to one. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our earth material and we're going to copy our node group that we created when we created our day night mask. And then we're going to go back to our atmosphere and paste that back in. So we can drag that and we're going to put that into the factor of the mix shader that we just created. And that's going to split up our atmosphere into a more light version in where the light is hitting it and a darker, more subdued blue version where the shadow is. So as you can see, if I made that color too red, you can see where it splits. That's just for demonstrative purposes though. We can keep that to a nice blue. Our next call of order is that we're going to create a band that goes across the interchange from day to night. And this band is going to act as a sort of a fake Rayleigh effect, essentially. To do this, we're going to create two shadow masks, not unlike the one that we created for the day and night mask. So what that means is we can duplicate that mask and then we're going to hit the number three on it so we can rename our node group. To something new. So I'm going to kind of call this shadow mask. Now I'm just going to rename it in its node name tab just so it reflects that change. We're then going to go back inside our shadow mask, disconnect the input, and then we're going to flip the color ramp. We are then going to add a mix RGB node and we're going to connect the color from the color ramp into the factor of our mix shader node. Next, we're going to put from our group inputs, our first input into color one and our second input into color two. So we're going to have two color inputs. So when we press tab to leave our node group, you'll see that color one and color two are going to be accessible from the node group. We're then going to change color one to black and color two to white. After that, we're going to duplicate our shadow mask group and we're going to just drop that just beneath our first one. And then we're just going to flip those colors to so make color one white and color two black. Now, if I were to take the color from the shadow mask that I just created and plug it into the surface, we're going to notice these incredible, awful artifacting. Now, if I uncheck show back face, it will get rid of it. But we do want to keep show back face on despite that being heavy artifacting. But if you would like to edit without that artifacting, you can just turn show back face off. But we are going to turn it back on towards the end. So you may notice that because I flipped the colors of my node groups, the black and the white appears on different hemispheres according to which node group that I pick. So I'm just going to create a mix node and I'm going to set it to darker now. And then we're going to plug in both my node groups into the color one and color two. And that's going to create this band effect, as you can see here. Now you can affect the band by going into either one of the shadow groups that we created and just playing around with the color ramps until the band is looking just right for you. Next, we're going to get another emission shader. So we're going to tab out of our node group and we're going to duplicate our emission shader. We can then change its color to something to be the opposite of what our atmosphere's color is. So if your atmosphere is red, you can make it bluish to greenish. If it's blue, you can make it reddish to orangish. It's always a good rule of thumb to do opposite or complementary colors. Now I've added a mix shader in and I'm gonna plug my other mix shader into the top input of my new mix shader and I'm gonna place the emission to the bottom input of my mix shader. I'm then going to take 
that mix shader that we just created. And then I'm going to duplicate it and put it in so that it connects to the wire. Then I'm going to take the darken value, place that into the factor, and take that original output of that mix shader and put it into the bottom of the mix shader that I just created. And it's going to create an effect like this. So as you can see, our uh, emission strength might be too high because we're getting this really ugly looking um, black storm like feature. So we can just um, put our strength down to something like a two or a one. It doesn't have to be too high. Okay, we're very close to finishing now. We're going to grab another mix shader. Yes, I know, another mix shader. And we're going to drag that out there. Then we're going to grab our um, shader from there and put it into our bottom value of that mix shader. And then we're going to go back to our third last mix shader and put it into the top value of the mix shader. Now we'll see that we're getting this really nice um, effect, but unfortunately that the Rayleigh is going over our atmosphere. So we're going to have to go back all the way to our multiply node and drag that into the factor of our very last mix shader. And we lost a bit of the color, so we could actually bump up our emission node after all. Maybe 22, I think 22 looks quite good. And there we go, we've got a great atmosphere. Now you may notice that uh, the clouds aren't actually there anymore. And the reason for that is because the show back face is turned off. So by turning it on, we can get all those clouds back. So it's a very easy fix. And see, we've still got all those horrible, horrible artifacting going on with our shadow catcher, our shadow mask, I mean, but it's not picking it up, which is really good because this effect wouldn't work if it did. So we have finished the nodes tree setup, which is great. So here it is, here it is in all of its glory. I will post a high resolution image of this on my Twitter, which is, which you can find at Fowls on Fantasy. Um, just in case you want like a detailed guide to go along with it. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. We can change the colors a little bit. I do. So I made my atmosphere a bit darker and just shrunk it down a little bit. Makes it a bit more realistic, give it a bit more richness to it. But that is the node setup. For those of you who have got to this point, I would like to thank you so much for watching. I really hope that uh, you were able to learn something along the way. It is now 11 p.m. where I am and I'm quite tired. So I think I'll be wrapping this video up here. In the next part, we'll be looking at how to take this scene even further and just give it that extra punchiness with a bit of animation and a, a few models of a satellite or something like that. If you've learned anything new or have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you appreciate my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button because it will really help me out. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falson from FalsonFantasy.com signing off.